The most effective ecological restoration projects are built with all the relevant partners and supplied by the best information available. And Arctic grayling and the Manistee River watershed are no different. As the only member of the trout and salmon family native to the streams of Lower Michigan, this, they provided both food and recreation to the tribes of the region and those who followed. However, this iconic species was lost from Michigan waters by the 1930s, due in part to habitat degradation uh, from logging practices and competition and predation by introduced trout species. Previous attempts by the state of Michigan to restore Arctic grayling were unsuccessful, partially caused by stocking practices that missed key aspects of the species' life history. Arctic grayling, like their salmon cousins, pick up on chemical cues from their birth stream water very early in life a process known as imprinting. They then use these cues as adults to return to their birth stream for spawning, thus continuing their life cycle. Historical stocking practices used Arctic grayling raised in hatcheries, where the water that they imprinted on was very different from the stocking stream water. These fish likely wandered the watersheds they were stocked in for their entire lives, looking for water that they would never find. To address these shortcomings, a new technique was required to help establish self-sustaining populations of Arctic grayling. Known as remote site incubation, this process places recently fertilized eggs into a stream site enclosure that receives stocking stream water for imprinting. The fish then hatch out into the stream and are much more likely to return to the very same stream for spawning. As this method has been widely tested and gives Arctic grayling reintroduction the best chance of success, identifying where to place them in Michigan streams is vital. Previous research has found high quality habitat across the Manistee watershed for Arctic grayling, with cool shaded streams, gravel beds for spawning, pools for juvenile rearing, and a well-connected watershed that's largely unaffected by human presence. However, the spatial scale of the current data limits the decision-making ability on exact remote site incubator placement. Built with a network of tribal, state, and federal partners, my research focuses on developing riverscape scale habitat suitability models of the Arctic grayling in the Upper Manistee watershed. The Upper Manistee, highlighted in pink on the map, was chosen as a result of its known habitat characteristics and the importance of the watershed to the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians, a key tribal partner. The habitat suitability models will be informed by multiple metrics, such as substrate composition, water velocity, water depth, and um, water quality. These metrics will then be scored for the individual life stages of Arctic grayling, as each stage uses habitat slightly differently. The end goal of my research is to provide maps to both my partners and the public that showcase the best possible areas for Arctic grayling reintroduction in the Upper Manistee watershed. This work will help return one of Michigan's lost fish to waters where it once swam, bringing a piece of Michigan and tribal history home. Thank you.